Hello, my name is Gustavo. On behalf of my co-authors and myself, I'm going to present this paper about the simulation of the evolution of ancient castles and fortified cities. One of the most wonderful things about living in Europe is that you don't have to travel much to find a well-preserved historical monument. For example, in this case, the French city of Carcassonne had a perfectly preserved wall and castle, and actually, if you ever go there, you will feel like going directly into medieval times because it's, it's preserved in such a perfect condition. But in my case, I, I'm lucky I don't have to travel far because the city where I live at, Girona, has a perfectly refurbished wall that can be visited anytime. And actually, in this picture, we can see the backyard of the, one of the university campuses. On the front left, you have the humanity building. Just behind it, you have this old church that actually belongs to the university and is an auditorium that is currently being refurbished. Behind it, there is the rectorate, and at the back of the photograph, you can see the city cathedral. Unfortunately, the technological campus is at the other side of the city, and we don't have a, an ancient medieval walls uh, any, any, any by near. So if you go to the inside of the city, you will find strange things like this one, where all, uh, but all walls were, that became useless because of the evolution of the city were repurposed as walls, but in this case for buildings and houses, and not for defensive purposes anymore. So if we go to books of history, we will see that walls, according to walls, were used since very, the very early cities, since ancient times, up to more or less up to the Napoleonic Wars, when the introduction of gunpowder became, rendered them a little bit useless. And they were used mainly to protect uh, city, but cities and fortresses uh, and castles. They reconfigured the city shape by adding walls and constraining the population growth. But also, at the same time, they had to evolve when the cities evolved. For example, in times of peace, people tended to build houses outside of the city walls because they couldn't fit anymore inside the, the castle. But that created a serious uh, challenge for the city because those houses outside of the walls could be used as trenches by the enemies to attack the city itself. So uh, they had to improve the defenses. They had to in, uh, enclose, for example, create new walls to include those new structures in order to protect the city. And those changes can still be observed. So our goal is to create a framework for the forward and inverse design of ancient cities and castles and their evolutions. Uh, our, our implementation is based on a key observation, that is the fortress evolution was quite closely related to the evolution of tactics and the corresponding weapons. So in our case, and our system is based on a three-layer model. Uh, on the top is, of course, the user controlling everything. Then we have the configuration layer where you can set the parameters for the terrain des design, the modeling of the castle parameters, the initial shape, the initial population, and of course, design and specify the characteristics and the parameters of each one of the battles. Then all that was fed into a battle simulation system and a city evolution system that perform the evolution and after getting the results the user could change the parameters or perhaps it can be an automatic algorithm trying to find some some parameters from the results of the simulation or the if the results were satisfying they could be directly sent to 3d generation and a final create some nice renderings of the of the series uh, our structure of a castle uh, contained uh, was defined can be defined in this picture. Uh, on the left, we see the original castle made by two elements that are walls and towers labeled with A and B, and quite often they were surrounded by a moat labeled with C. Uh, as I mentioned, in times of peace, people tend to build houses outside of the walls that were a serious defensive uh, problem, as I said and we level them with D, and sometimes uh, we have natural phenomenon like a river in E, and uh, the attackers in times of war tend to create trenches to attack the city and level with the letter F. Now a quick comment about towers and their evolution. At the beginning, towers were square when they, when they realized that square towers were not a good idea because they had the corners were weak spots. They introduced round towers, uh, but the round tower, but round towers also had problems because, as we can see on the left image, the top tower has a grey triangle-like shape on top of it, 
which represents an area that can only be defended by the tower itself and cannot be protected by the two neighboring towers. Those were blind spots that could create tactical uh, defensive problems. To prevent that, the solution was to create irregular towers that covered the whole uh, area without leaving any possible blind spots. They were called bastions. Um, the shape of the bastions depended on the geometry of the, of the walls uh, that were there. Now, our armies were basically two attackers and defenders, and now we are going to see each one in turn. The first unit we are going to discuss is the infantry. The infantry have a very simple role, that is to approach the castle and try to put a ladder and climb the, the wall uh, and, uh, or go through a hole made by cannons. Uh, archers, were their, their objective was to put themselves at the position where they could reach the castle to throw uh, arrows as, as many as possible, trying to kill as many defenders as they could and also to protect the armies that were approaching the, the walls. Siege towers were a special kind of structures that were constructed, constructed during, during the battle itself, uh, at the, a little bit far from the battlefield, and then they needed a clear path towards the castle wall. Of course, the path was never clear, so special units were deployed to flatten the field. In the case the castle had a moat, one special unit called Tarpool was sent that was heavily defended and they had to approach the moat and cover it with earth. Of course, you can imagine that, that being on a, on a turtle was a very dangerous job because the defenders literally sent everything, uh, threw everything on them. In any case, uh, the siege towers were created as high as the walls themselves and were divided in floors. Each one was heavily protected and contained a whole unit of archers. Finally, in the later, latest stages of the evolution of the of walled cities, they introduced gunpowder and with them they introduced cannons. Cannons could not move and actually they threw big balls of iron or sharp nail. They, those bullets did not explode as in the movies and they were deployed as close as possible to the walls with the single objective of repeatedly shooting at the same point of the wall until destroying it so the infantry could breach the could reach the castle wall through that point. On the other side, the defenders were, are, in our implementations, are archers and cannons. Archers, if killed, were replaced by one from a finitely sized reserve, and cannons were deployed on towers and bastions, and the walls and the mouths defending were protective, protection enough or a reasonable protection for, the, for them. Of course, they, they could not move. In general, the battalions were deployed automatically, either on the field for attackers or on the castle walls for the defenders, and they were completely controlled by the user by choosing parameters like battalion skills or for the attackers, the initial placement by flanks. The battlefield in our implementation is simply a regular grid where each seal had a movement a penalty and a height, and the settings were applied whenever a battalion entered that cell. For example, if the terrain was difficult, the battalion received a, penalty, a movement penalty factor that slowed them down. The battle simulation had a clear objective that was to replace the knowledge that a military engineer of those times had. So we do that by repeatedly simulating the battles and trying to find the castle weak points. We define a weak point as a point where an attacker has climbed to the top or enters through a hole made by a cannon. At that point, the simulation finished and we recorded with which was uh, the, the weak point. For shooting either archers or riflemen, uh, shoot it uh, 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 with the cosinus distribution around the direction between the shooter and the target and up to a maximum shooting distance. As I mentioned, cannons shoot repeatedly on the same point of the wall, usually starting from the top, and whenever that point, that spot was destroyed, they lower their aim a little bit. Now, uh, something very important is related with the destruction of the walls. The rubble of the, of the destruction fell on both sides of the wall, but in the outer side of the wall it was particularly important because that created a ramp that attackers could use later on to breach the castle wall, so that, would, that should be taken into account during the simulations. Now, depending on the year and in the moment of the, of the, wall, the city evolution, uh, different kinds of towers were used. At the beginning, towers were square, then they were replaced by round towers, and finally, bastions were introduced. Our criterion is to select the closest endpoint of the wall segment to, to, the, 
weak point to place a new tower or to update an old existing tower. If, as we can see on the right, the two endpoints were very far from the weak point and directly a new tower was created at the, at, at the corresponding weak point. Finally, in times of peace, people uh, tended, well, the population tended to grow and people tended to create houses at the outside of the walls when they couldn't fit anymore inside the walls. In, the, in some cases that create, well, in all cases that created a serious problem, but, in some, but depending on the way the population grew, they had to make different kind of evolutions. On the top left, we can see an example where the population grew uniformly around the original walls, making them completely useless and a new bounding wall had to be created. On the top right, we can see an example where the population grew in a certain direction and the, the city could reuse some part of the wall, but some parts here leveled with C had to be, uh, well, uh, became useless and then were used as we saw in the case of Girona, for example, as walls for houses and buildings, but not for defensive purposes anymore. And at the bottom, we see a real case, the case that happens when the city grows across a natural phenomenon such as a river. In that case, a completely new structure independent of the original one had to be created. Now, a quick comment about the final stages of the evolution of walls. When the gunpowder was introduced and cannons started to be used, the original vertical walls become, become very weak because those attacks destroyed them quite easily. So they started create and creating uh, walls with a slanted exterior with a slope in a way such that bullets hitting the wall uh, bounced and went over the wall and not through it. But of course, that solution that was very good for uh, cannons was very good because it very bad because it created a ramp for attacking armies to enter. To prevent that, they created a series of structures that were an authentic labyrinth with the idea that any enemy that entered this area could be shot from several directions at the same time, creating an authentic uh, rat trap for anyone that entered there. So those structures will net cover ways and ravelings, and they can be seen in the latest stages of the wall, of the evolution of the city. Here we can see the, uh, the user interface of our system is quite simple. It allows to enter all the parameters and to define the directions of the growth of the city in times of peace and the directions of each one of the attacking armies and their composition in times of war. Here we can see some results, for example, starting from an distri initial distribution of barracks and headquarters. Uh, we grew to until we got this castle that you can see in the picture and it's based on the Ciudadela Fortress of Barcelona. That fortress doesn't exist anymore, but ancient maps uh, from the year uh, year 1800, more or less, uh, shows a, show a high degree of similarity with our results. We can also create a 3D model of the city. And to go to another example of an actual city, uh, we can see that this is the case of Girona city in the, in the 14th century. We can see four clearly defined areas, fortified areas. At the beginning, the city was a Roman camp that had an initial wall created by the Romans and the river at the southern part of the city. Later, when the city started to grow, population started to grow to the right, as we can see here. So a new, a new extension of the wall had to be created. But when that extension was created, people started to grow to the left and to the other side of the river, forcing the city to create two new extensions. The one on the right is especially important because the, the, there was a, a church there very close to the original wall that was used by attackers, actually was used by attackers to, th to throw things into the city and that was a real danger. So as soon as the city was retaken, the, that part of the city was retaken, they immediately created a new extension of the wall to prevent that from happening again. Now we can simulate the battles that happened at Girona between the 5th and 12th centuries and we will find that the city evolved in this way. When we got this result, we were really puzzled because we didn't know that Girona had bastions ever. So we went to our colleagues in the Department of History of Art and they told us that actually Girona had bastions during a very short period of time uh, until they realized that the new, the new uh, weaponry, the new technologies, the new kind of uh, exploding bombs and such uh, made, them, made that those bastions completely useless, so they were destroyed. So actually, we learned from our simulation things about our city that we, we didn't know. 
Uh, now we can see, we can apply the same simulations to other cities. For example, here we see four stages in the evolution of the, Carca the French city of Carcassonne. At the bottom, we can take, we can see four images taken from history books showing the, the same, the city at the more or less the same years. Of course, we can create a 3D, we can extrude the walls and create a 3D model, then fill it with houses, as we can see on the right, and of course, make a nice picture, as we can see at the bottom right. But the important thing is when we compare it with an actual picture of the city, as we can see on the left, and we can see the high degree of similarity. Of course, by changing the parameters of our simulation, we can change the way the city expands or the years when the historical settings, when different changes were made, changing the defensive properties of the city. And of course, we can change the attacking directions and get different results from our simulation. In our system, it also allows us to do inverse design. Inverse design uh, basically allows us, for example, if we know that Girona was breached during the Napoleonic Wars at the point, the red point marked with a target level, uh, we can look for to reproduce the, the, the original placement of the attacking troops. At the beginning, they placed the troops at the side of the river, but they didn't know that the river floods every year, more or less at the same season, or, um, on those, at that time, floated. Nowadays, it does, doesn't flood anymore. But in any case, it took them a whole year to remove the cannons from the mud and put them at the northern part of the, ci northern part of the city where it was not, uh, it was not flooded. So uh, we started our simulation, and the simulation gave us as a result that those three arrows were the ideal play, the three best positions to place the armies. And we can compare that with the maps on the right drawn by fans of military events that reproduce that battle year after year nowadays. And this is the map they use to, the tactics map they use to reproduce that battle for the, for the representation, the yearly representation. So we can see that the, 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 both things are very, very similar. So in conclusions, we think that we've given our first steps towards our goal of reproducing the evolution of the city, but of uh, the first baby steps in the goal of bridging the gap between history and computer graphics. In the way, we created a novel method to simulate ancient city evolution, taking into account uh, time-dependent user-defined events and changing the natural growth of the city and the natural population growth of the city given by battle sieges and, of course, the different fortification changes. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have question, questions, we will be very pleased to answer them. Thank you very much.